From Phoenix, Arizona, home to the brand that's made golf easier for more than 60 years, it's Ping Academy Live 2022. Here's your host, Andrew Rice. My next guest credentials are the envy of many inside the golf industry. He played college golf at the Colorado School of Mines where he earned a degree in mechanical engineering, eventually landing an internship with Ping. From there, he rose to lead Ping's product design efforts before assuming his current role as the company's Vice President of Fitting and Performance. In between all that, he earned his PGA Class A certification, competed in five PGA Championships, one US Open, and five PGA Tour events. Great to see you again, Marty. Andrew, great to be here. Marty, we've got a lot to talk about today, so let's jump right in. We can't talk about custom fitting without rewinding the clock 50 years or so to the early days of Ping in Karsten Solheim's garage. It was there he pioneered custom fitting. Tell us why custom fitting was so important to Karsten. Yeah, I think uh, all golfers are indebted to what Karsten and how, and how he revolutionized the industry. Uh, I think it started uh, just like on the design side, it started with um, his application to himself. He uh, was frustrated that he couldn't get clubs custom fit to himself and then when he uh, first started making putters he went out to the tour and he worked with a lot of tour players and he was noticing that even the tour players had favorite clubs in their bag that performed better uh, than others and he found that even the tour players didn't have all their their clubs custom fit to them and then he really started empathizing with the golfers is, hey, the you know, everyday golfers should be able to have clubs fit just like the tour players. And so that's where he kind of brought custom fitting to the marketplace and really flipped the industry uh, upside down and, and said, hey, all golfers should have custom fit clubs available to them at no extra cost, just like the tour players. The iconic ping color coding system soon followed and it remains a key part of the process today. How does it work and more importantly, why does it work? Yeah, Karsten first uh, created the color code system by observing that golfers have all different types of builds. So it goes back to your biometrics. Uh, how are all golfers built? And the color code system works by taking a few simple but key measurements, how tall you are, and then your wrist to floor measurement, which is a proxy for how long your arms are. And even till today, that provides our foundation for fitting your line goal or your color code. And so uh, even though the color code chart has been out there uh, for quite some time when Karsten uh, originally came up with it, we've continued to evolve it. And just like you know, building a good house or a good building, it's our foundation for fitting irons. And uh, we still use it today. Now. Here we are all these years later, and the job of your team is to continually evolve custom fitting and carry on Karsten's legacy. Fitting is important as ever, with more and more golfers enjoying its benefits. As the recognized leader in this area, how do you guys do it? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I think just like Karsten did, uh, Andrew, we get a lot of inspiration from the tour. So we look to see what are tour players doing um, and how are they leveraging the latest technologies such as you know statistics and playing on the golf course, motion capture system, advanced you know launch monitors and measurement systems? How can we turn that into tools and processes that the everyday golfer can benefit from? And that's a lot of what my group does. We get inspiration from the tour. Uh, we know not all every golfer is out there to even maybe shoot their lowest score possible. Their goals might be a little bit different, but we can get inspiration from the tour, use all of the tools that we have at the Pink Proving Grounds and develop uh, fitting uh, technologies that the everyday golfer can benefit from, just like Karsten did. As launch monitors like TrackMan become more accessible for everyday golfers, talk us through how a club fitter can best use the data it provides. What are the key numbers a fitter should evaluate when making a driver recommendation, for example? The driver is a fun one because ultimately your goal is to maximize distance for the most part. It's be mindful of your dispersion, but really the goal for all of us with the driver is to hit the ball as far as possible. And so the key variables there are uh, the initial launch angle, ball speed, and spin rate. Those are the big three. Um, one thing we found recently in order to optimize your ballistics, your ball speed, launch, and spin, 
the fitter really needs to take into account the angle of attack of the golfer. Ball speed, initial launch angle, spin rate, and angle of attack. With those four things, we have an optimal launch and spin chart. Uh, you can get down and really optimize someone's launch angle and spin rate. For example, uh, if a golfer hits down, if their angle of attack is downward on the golf ball, their optimal launch is going to be lower with more spin on it than somebody hits more up on the golf ball. That's equally as important as somebody's uh, swing speed or club head speed. So in order to help somebody hit the ball as far as possible, you need those four variables. Um, then we also want to be mindful of their spin axis. To help somebody hit the ball far also, you can get as much curve out of the ball fly uh, as possible. So if you can try to minimize their side spin or get their spin axis close to zero, that's another new way to unlock distance and things like our CG shifter on our driver uh, and using our uh, trajectory tuning technology, uh, you can help minimize someone's curve as much as possible. Um, and then with the driver, you want to be mindful of dispersion. The goal might not always be to minimize dispersion. For some golfers, you, you're okay having them hit it further, even if their dispersion grows a little bit. You want to be mindful of that ratio of how much distance you gain relative to dispersion. And that you can measure on uh, TrackMan or Launch Monitor by, um, you know, the size of their stat area. Very interesting, Marty. What about irons? Launch monitor numbers can sometimes be misinterpreted during a fitting. In other words, be careful not to make a recommendation based on a golfer's best or longest shot. Share some advice on what to look for in an iron fitting. Yeah, I think irons and fitters and even golfers can confuse a driver fitting to an iron fitting very easily. Where in a driver, hey, you do kind of care about that one ball and maximizing your distance, but in irons that's not the case. You don't want to have that, that jumper or that flyer that flies the green. In irons we want to be more mindful of uh, getting the right launch and spin for the player to um, optimize their landing angle or their stopping power. In irons we see a lot of iron fittings uh, mistakes being made with golfers having too low of spin rate, carrying maybe a little bit too much on total distance instead of being mindful of your, your front back dispersion or your distance dispersion and then getting the right launch and spin to have you so that you can have enough stopping power. Um, and stopping power comes in the form of peak height and landing angle for most golfers. Um, that's going to vary a little bit, Andrew, based on uh, the playing conditions. If somebody plays in breezy conditions more, we might want to bring that peak height down. Uh, but that's something, and we have a great chart for that to help fitters and golfers understand landing angle and stopping power in irons. Because one of the questions we often uh, get is, what is a good spin rate on your irons? And it's not a thousand times the club number for everybody that a lot of people think. And so we can manipulate the model we select, and we have an array of different iron models now, over six or seven different iron models we can use to manipulate that launch and spin. Uh, we can ma manipulate the shaft, we can manipulate the loft through retro spec or power spec. Uh, we can change, golf, change or recommend golf ball that you play. Uh, again, to help be mindful in irons, which is different than a driver where you're maximizing distance, to let's hit a certain trajectory window, Let's get the gaps right, and let's understand the stopping power for the player. Interesting. Let's talk about driver shafts and their role in fitting, Marty. Golfers have a lot of really good options to consider, but not everyone is best for their game. I'm sure we could talk for hours on shaft fitting, but give us a quick and concise overview of shaft fitting. Yeah, shaft fitting, and in particular, Andrew, driver shaft fitting is, is crucial to optimizing kind of the mechanical uh, side of things, which is the delivery of the club head. So one of the roles of a driver shaft uh, as the golfer and as a fitter is to deliver the club head in a certain way where you can help influence your launch conditions. And so that's to change your initial launch angle and your spin rate. So one of the roles of a driver shaft is to dial in your launch and spin but the other role, and this is where, again, there's a, there's a little more art, art to it, is how that shaft feels to the golfer. And that uh, has to be embraced in the fitting process. 
uh, golfers who kind of pull down on the shaft more in transition will generally do better with a shaft that's stiffer. So that's where we have to use club head speed to get, to get a golfer in the ballpark of the right flex, but never is the final recommendation. And that's because um, the way a golfer goes into that change of direction, that transition, and is applying those forces and torques to the shaft going into transition and out will really have an impact on how that shaft feels to the golfer. And so uh, fitting the feel of the shaft is just as important as changing the uh, mechanical characteristics, the stiffness, the torque, the weight and balance on the delivery down at impact. So we put you know, kind of equal priority into fitting the transition of the swing as well as using the shaft to fine tune the launch and spin. Ping is all about performance. In fact, that word is in your title. Vice President of Fitting and Performance. Tell us how does Ping measure performance? I imagine in a lot of different ways as it means different things to different types of players. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a question we ask ourselves every day. How should we measure performance? There's measuring performance in the lab environment, which could be our 3D motion capture system or Enzo. There's measuring performance in a tests that we design and, and perform on our test field at the Proving Grounds, which could be measuring various ballistic attributes. Uh, but there's also performance on the golf course. And that's what we care about a lot, is how golfers play on the golf course. And so, you know, uh, ultimately we're bringing in new statistics such as strokes gained. We can actually apply a strokes gain comparison between a new club that we're designing and an uh, older generation product or a new club that we're fitting versus your gamer and that's more applicable to how that's going to be relevant to your score on the golf course so there's some fun new ways to measure performance but we also need to be mindful that you know uh, not every golfer's goal is to is the same as a is a tour player and we're very mindful of that some players goal and performance is to you know have more fun and and uh, enjoy the game more and every once in a while hit a drive past their buddies and so you know our definition of performance uh, has to change based on our uh, cross-section population of our golfers and that's a it's a never-ending challenge of defining what is performance for our customer. Marty that was excellent very informative and presented in a very user-friendly way.